layered up this morning. I got two, two layers on. I'm not much of a winter coat guy. I don't know why, because it's freaking 32 degrees today. A little better than yesterday morning, but cold. Real, keep it real, most of the reason I don't have a winter coat is because I tend to be a little bit forgetful. And when I wear a winter coat to leave the house in the morning, I often leave it somewhere on the back of a chair, hanging on a door. D. Will, what's up, my friend? Thanks for hopping on, buddy. <clears throat> Good to see you. Saw Dave during the Super Bowl, him and his wife and his lovely son and daughter. Um, you know, as I've gotten older, relationships and friendships have become, who might be the most important thing to me. Um, so it's good to see Dave. I love Dave. I've known him for 20 years. He's been one of my closest friends. Good to see us. What's up, Matt? Matt's in, uh, I think, Mexico this morning. What's up, buddy? Um, it's 32 degrees here. I'm guessing it's 82 degrees where you are. Um, but anyway, that's not what I want to talk about this morning. I only got about a 12-minute ride, so let's get started. I am reading this book, or rather listening to this book right now, and it's all about really relationships. And it talks about relationships from a, a slightly different perspective. It talks about relationships and how important they are to grow in business, specifically to teach us that inside of our businesses that we have the ability to create freedom with our time, freedom with our money, and freedom with our, our, our mind and our thoughts. And the only way truly, they say, to, to create that freedom that we all seek when we start a business is through people. And then it gets into a thousand different, um, you know, approaches, philosophies, tactics, and tools about how we can leverage, build, and grow relationships in an effort to grow our business and grow our business with the specific intent of allowing us those freedoms while simultaneously creating those freedoms for the people that we build those relationships with. So today, uh, I'm on chapter two. I just started the book. On chapter two, it talks about procrastination. Procra procrastination. Uh, I promise uh, I can speak. And uh, so certainly, it might, like my ears perked up, right? Because procrastination for me is like, a constant merry-go-round. And in the very beginning of the chapter, the guy says something that was quite frankly a little bit shocking. And he said that procrastination, he has come to believe is profound wisdom. And I'll explain because it, it sounds so silly, right? That procrastination we consider to be a character flaw. <clears throat> it's just bad. But in his observation, he found that everybody procrastinates. And he said, when we want to start something new or we want to do something differently or we want to uh, embark on a new journey, we all of a sudden become super aware of everybody that's doing it. And then oftentimes, the most visible people are the ones that tend to be the most successful. So when we think about losing weight or working out, all of a sudden we see all of these people that are in such great shape that go to the gym three times a day that, you know, eat like a rabbit and look like a, a Greek goddess or God with their shirt off. And it leads to procrastination. Um, he used the analogy that, you know, if we're in a room full of people and someone says our name, even if they're not talking to us, we instantly hear it, even though there's tons of noise. When we think about buying a particular car, or we buy that car, now all of a sudden we notice that there's a hundred of them on the road. It's a natural tendency. Our awareness gravitates towards things that are top of mind, um, or we, quite frankly, in that particular time frame, are most aware of. So when we believe that it's time to, to start a new journey or a new project, we become super aware 
of what's happening around us, particularly um, around that 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 project or um, that new idea, and quickly we become deterred and procrastinate because we don't know how to do it. And the name of the book is How Not Who. So this is where it ties it together, right? So the author says he found himself, which is much like me, to be great at starting things. He had lots and lots of great new ideas. Uh, He was super excited to get started. He would commit to doing something and then never see it all the way through or follow through. That started to deter him to start new projects and he would procrastinate them because he didn't know how to see things through to the end or he didn't have um, you know that behavioral trait that gave him the, 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 the ability and quite frankly the joy out of all of the details that it takes to take an idea from, from concept all the way through delivery. So he started to think about procrastination. He's like, everybody does it. It's a, it's, a, it's, it's a natural behavior. Why do we label it as bad when everybody does it? So his thought process was, maybe we should think of procrastination differently. And he thought of procrastination as wisdom. And the wisdom was in, I want to deserve or this project needs to be started and I don't know how to do it. I should seek the who. It's the whole concept of the book. And again, it talks about the, the value of leveraging and building and nurturing and, and, and developing strong relationships. So now when he pivoted his thinking around procrastination and said, hey, if I'm procrastinating, it's a sign that I don't need to figure out how, but I need to figure out who. And that who will be, let's say, if you want to start working out. A lot of times we don't know how to do it or we're not sure uh, what the proper um, type of exercise is and um, you know how, how drastically do we need to change our eating habits to coincide with our, our exercise. The who is a personal trainer or maybe even an accountability partner. Maybe it's somebody in your sphere that really has figured out working out and eating differently. And that friend of yours They talk a lot about the power of social media. And if you want to change your eating habits and you want to become better at exercise, then you should just put it out there. And they even give you a tool about how to create what's called an impact tool that says, like, why am I doing it? What's the desired outcome? Why is it important? What happens if I get it done? What happens if I don't get it done? And it helps you understand how important something may be to you and then develop the who around you that will help get it done. And I would just encourage you to, for me, I beat myself up about procrastination. I I just, I I labor over it. And there's a hundred different things that I want to do that I keep putting off. And I think the point in this book was well taken for me because when I think about starting it, I don't because most often I'm convinced I don't know how. And really what the author of this book is saying and the lesson I want to, I, I want to share with you that I, I believe that I learned from that was that's normal. You're not supposed to know how to do everything, particularly new things. So the only other option would be is that we completely engulf ourselves in, in learning this and becoming an expert. And frankly, that a lot of times can be intimidating. Um, and frankly, it just might not be possible based on our availability of time and other demands and and responsibilities we may have. So to summarize the the lesson that I learned today that I I, I hope you can get some value out of, this particular author labels procrastination as wisdom. And the wisdom is, is that your, your, your mind recognizes that that project at the current time is outside of your capabilities. And then what that should trigger for you is the acknowledgement that you need to go find who. Who is the person that's passionate about this type of project, that has this experience, that enjoys this type of work, that possesses the behaviors and the skills to not only start, but integrate, finish, and follow through with this this project. And what it's enabled him to do is to um, push himself to start 
and embark on extraordinary journeys, starting a business, writing a book. Uh, this particular person was um, an executive at a company and he really, you know, learned these behaviors and skills and, and this mindset while he was working for someone and probably had enough experience and a, and a good enough topic and enough information to write a book 15 years ago and he put it off. And it wasn't until he recognized that procrastination was wisdom and the wisdom in that procrastination is for you to be triggered to find out who. Who can I, do I currently have a relationship with that would uh, embrace this new opportunity? Um, because what happens then is you become someone else's who. By you pushing the status quo and delivering new ideas, there's other people that thrive on the implementation and the follow through with new ideas. And they rely on you or someone like you to be their who, to constantly feed and challenge them with new ideas and projects that enable them to live and do what they enjoy the most, which is building systems and processes and developing ideas from the start all the way through to the finish. So, and, and then again, you know, the rest of the book, I'm only on chapter two, but the first um, portion of the book talks uh, about how important relationships are um, for us to be happy and be successful. And this is just one of those examples. So when you find yourself procrastinating, um, don't beat yourself up about it. Don't think of it as a negative. Think of it as this person puts it at a, as a, a hardwired wisdom inside of us that recognizes what's on the other side of that wall or what's on the other side of this challenge is worthy. I currently don't possess the energy, the experience, the knowledge, um, and the follow through to get it done. But it doesn't mean that you should continue to procrastinate. It doesn't mean that you should give up. What it means is you should seek out the who and the relationships and the people that would come on that journey with you and would love to fill the gaps to help you get there. So I hope that's um, as, as enlightening for you as it was for me. If you want to learn more about that, go and find the book, Who Not How?, um, and I think you'll find a, a ton of great lessons. Again, I'm on lesson two and, uh, I downloaded the, what they call the impact tool that helps you, uh, create a vision, um, whether it's a new project, um, a new business or whatever it is and, uh, develop the, you know, the reasoning behind it, um, that'll help you identify, uh, the right uh, people to, to help you accomplish that goal. So I hope everybody has a great day. Stay warm. And uh, just go out and do your best today. We'll see you.